Hello, welcome back to uh, education, uh, the history of education. So we continue with mod six, which we are looking at uh, Mendeva and uh, Re Renaissance uh, education. So Mendeva and uh, Renaissance education were distinct periods in history of education that has marked different philosophies, methods, and institutions. So it has, uh, this is a period where the emergency of institution, uh, the modern institution came about. So in module, uh, in lesson uh, five, we are going to look at uh, medieval education, which is uh, 500 AD to uh, 1500 AD, which is 500 to 15. Hundred AD. This is your host, Dr. Tripoman Fumbo, and my line is uh, uh, plus two six zero nine seven six eighteen twelve fifty three. If you want to contact me, you can contact me on WhatsApp. Uh, remember that uh, this course is uh, coming from uh, Mukuba College of Education where we are offering the intensive diploma in teaching methodology and uh, uh, the mode of study it is 100% online, so you can register by calling uh, on this number or just uh, uh, scan uh, the, uh, the, that, that one. Then you'll be able to be directed on how you can be able to enroll or register on this, uh, uh, for this course. Uh, Medva education, which spanned from the 5th century to 15th century, was primarily focused on preparing students for the Craig, Monstake, life and uh, nobility. So this was uh, focused on the uh, on training the Craigs because the Craigs were the most important thing people in those days and were the intellectuals that were uh, raised in those days. So in this period, medieval education laid the, f the groundwork for the uh, Renaissance education and the development of modern education despite its limitation and focus on religious training and uh, training of the uh, Craig. Here are uh, uh, some of the detailed overview of Madiva education, which spans from the uh, from uh, five to fifteen uh, uh, fifteen century AD. So the key features were that these uh, this kind of education was focused on church dominated. So the churches, which was the Catholic Church, dominated the church, the education, and they were the ones that were uh, leading the education, which was mostly focused on religious, and it was focused on the people that were training to become priests or become uh, for religious services, and so. Uh, that made the education to be limited to only people that wanted to become uh, Craigs or wanted to become uh, priests, uh, the ones that uh, had the access to this kind of education. Uh, the, the way they were uh, doing the, uh, the curriculum was uh, based on the Krask study, which was a uh, text, which was the, the study of Latin text. So they studied Latin texts. Um, the method was used it was memorization and root learning. Uh, so their kind of learning was memorization. And uh, uh, this has gone down to today where education is, uh, most education is based on memorization. Then they had also what they called uh, trivium which was grammar, rhetoric, and logic. When you talk about rhetoric, it's uh, uh, that kind of uh, memorizing scripture, like uh, 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 singing, like what the, the way the Muslims uh, do their, uh, lead their scriptures, like, um, uh, and memorizes their scriptures, like, so that is that is how they they used to so even in the uh in this uh period they taught people to uh to lead as if you are leading as if you are singing then uh quadrivium uh, was based on arithmetic geometry and astronomy and music so this was the 
this this uh, were, were their curriculum and the uh, there was also what they called what they were doing which was called uh, scriptoriums which was copying of manuscripts by hand so these uh, uh, students were made to copy manuscripts by hand and also they were what was called uh, scholaristism which was emphasizes on faith and reasoning faith and reasoning so that those were the emphasis on this uh, uh, kind of education which was uh, which was the Mandiva uh, type of education so what was the purpose of the Mandiva uh, education it focused on the religious training and preparation for the uh, uh, Craig or priesthood uh, work so primarily the focus on religious training and the preparation for the uh, for, for the Craig education aims to produce devout obedient and knowledgeable servants of the church and it also emphasizes on theological studies scripture and the uh, return so the curriculum as we said of the Mandeva was limited to Latin theology and classical texts Latin a uh, study of language and grammar and literature it also emphasizes on the theology which is the study of scripture dogma and church teachings and also classical uh, text study of classical latin texts as such as uh Cicero, which was the oratory and the philosophy then uh Virgo, which was a uh, visual which was a uh, poetry of it which was uh, also poetry and aristotle philosophy uh, the teaching methods in the madiva uh, period was uh, relied heavily on uh, memorization which students memorize texts text scriptures and uh, also prayers and also it was uh, uh, they used to do what is called lotte learning which students repeated and recited information without necessary understanding the context of the meaning. So you they they would uh, make the students to memorize whatever that they were teaching. Sometimes students will not even know what they are memorizing. They will not even understand what they are memorizing or the meaning of the things they are memorizing. Then there was a repetition student repeated exercises prayers and texts uh, multiple times to reinforce learning so they were students were taught to uh, repeatedly cite like prayers texts uh, and other uh, things which were uh, uh, meant for the students or the trainees to to be able to uh, speak them by heard uh, these methods were often used in conjunction with uh, what is called lecture lecture which uh, comes from the word uh, which uh, takes the word lecture uh, teachers lead texts around and students copy them by hand so in this uh, which is called lecture we uh, the teachers were reading the text they will begin to lead any uh, dictation students then we are going to uh, be writing the uh, the text as the teacher is uh, reading then there was also which is dictator dictation which is uh, dictation uh, in this modern uh, time teachers dictated texts and students wrote them down then uh, there was also what is called a dispute which students engaged in debates and arguments to develop critical thinking so students were allowed to debate on certain issues so that they were able to uh, uh, to develop critical thinking and also engage themselves into uh, a proper way of presentation so the institutions included the monasteries which were the centers of learning manuscripts copying and scripture uh, growth so the monasteries were places where they were isolated there were monks which who were isolated so those people that were uh, applied to go into monasteries were isolated and were there what they were doing was they, they were copying manuscripts and also uh, 
uh, learning uh, the scripture and uh, spiritual growth. Then there were covenant covenants. Covenants were schools that uh, were monasteries for female. So uh, girls were put into uh, isolated place where they were provided with uh, education for women, as exclusively where they were just uh, in a different place and uh, they were not uh, allowed to interact with other uh, people. Then there were also what they called cathedrals. Cathedrals were attached to cathedrals offering education to Craig and uh, lay people. So in these uh, cathedral, cathedrals, that's where they were doing catechism, teaching the lay people uh, uh, how to, uh, the, the, the teaching the lay people uh, to memorize scriptures and also to learn some uh, some skills like the, like reading. Then they were in the 12th century. There was emergence of universities. Emerging in the 12th century, universities like uh, Bologna, Paris, and Oxford University were advanced education where those people that uh, came from these institutions were. Uh, meant to go to these uh, uh, higher learning institutions. So the key figures, these uh, key figures, these individuals played significant roles in shaping Mandiva education, philosophy and theology, laying the groundwork for future intellectual and education development. So there were people that formulated, as I always say, the gurus of this period. We have the gurus of this period like uh, St. Augustus, who was the bishop of uh, hip-hop and he was influential theologian and educator he his his emphasis emphasized the importance of faith and reasoning so him if, if he said that uh, faith should be coupled with uh, reasoning you should not just believe in things that you don't understand and uh, there must be faith and reasoning should go uh, hand in hand. So he wrote extensively on education, theology, and uh, philosophy. His works, such as uh, Confessions and uh, the City of God, remain influential even in this uh, generation. So this man lived between the uh, the between uh, AD uh, 354 to uh, to 430. Then we have got uh, Thomas Aquinas. Uh, who lived between 1225 to 1274 after AD. So uh, he was the Dominican friere or the Dominican uh, brother and scholastic philosopher. So synthesized Aristotelian uh, philosophy with Christian theology. So him, he was uh, able to bring Aristotelian, uh, Aristotle philosophy into Christian theology. And he, he emphasized the uh, use of reason and intellectual in understanding faith. So we need to uh, hear me. This emphasis was that uh, intellectual and uh, spiritual must be able to reconcile. He wrote extensively on philosophy, theology, and education. So he, his, uh, uh, his work is uh, so much uh, seen. And uh, uh, when you go into uh, some Catholic uh, institution, you'll be able to find his, his books, uh, his works such as uh, Summa Theological remain foundation to Catholic philosophy. So he laid down the uh, Catholic philosophy and this is the, uh, it's from his work where most of these brothers, uh, the first uh, uh, degree that you get if you are becoming a priest, which is uh, philosophy. So it was laid on this uh, 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 scholar. Then we had the, P, uh, the, the they had uh, Peter Abirad. Peter Albirad was the philosopher and ed educator. He, he spanned up from 1079 AD to 1142. Uh, His emphasis was reason, critical thinking, and intellectual curiosity. So reasoning and critical thinking was his emphasis when it came to uh, uh, to uh, the learning philosophy, uh, developed the what is called secret, uh, seek, seek, uh, none, which means yes and no method encouraging critical thinking. 
So uh, he wrote extensively on philosophy, theology, and education. His autobiography, The Story of My uh, Misfortunes, provide insight into his life teachings. So uh, when we look at the Mandiva period, it laid the foundation of, uh, of, of uh, our learning today. And as it was uh, so much emphasized on the uh, on memorizing and also on religious learning, but it has the impact on the way education is taken today. Uh, thank you so much, and God bless you. As I said, uh, you have to, uh, uh, if you want to start this course, you should, uh, you should call on this number 0976-1812-53, and you'll be uh, directed on how to do it. Thank you so much. This is your host, Dr. Tulipo Fumbo, and God bless you. See you in the next uh, lesson.